Here's a project I got to do the development for recently, and that's the Spur ROI calculator. I learned so many unique insights from this that I'm excited to share here. Now, there's a bunch of conditional fields here, and we're tracking which ones are required to advance. If we click, it focuses them on that next required field, and then they can go ahead and calculate their ROI and then refine the results here further. So many fields and even options within each field are conditional based on the results from the previous screen here. And then they can at any point share out these results. And if they share it with someone, it'll take that person to the second screen with those refinements pre-populated. One of the issues was positioning the tooltip. I could give this a display flex so that the icon goes next to the text, but then it's not really next to the last word like I wanted there. So instead I set the button element here to a display of inline and the text element here to a display of inline as well. And that way those elements go side by side here. Now, depending on the screen size, I ran into issues where sometimes we would have just the tooltip icon by itself on a line and I didn't really want that. So the parent that holds the text element and button together, I went ahead and gave it a text wrap of pretty and it actually treats that button as a word. So it'll make sure that it doesn't have one word on a line by itself and that kept the lockup that I needed. For the tooltips, I used a library called tippy.js and that ensures that if the tooltip is close to the top of the screen or the sides, it moves it so it doesn't get cut off. This client is very familiar with Webflow, so the goal was to have as much as possible editable natively, things like hiding and showing the paragraph, hiding and showing the tooltip and changing the tooltip text, and even things like changing what the default selected option is for each of these different fields and changing the value associated with that selected option for the calculator and being able to make different options conditional based on previously selected options here. So all that's controllable with components. For all of the different field types, I use component variants a lot to switch the style of the elements here. And here we have this min uh, value and max value as well. And instead of making the client add that number twice, once for the text on the page and another for the min and max value of the input, I wanted to connect those to the same things. But the attribute values on this input couldn't be connected to a text prop. So what actually works was using a number field, Webflow's new number field instead. By using that, I was able to set the number field as both the text value on this element and also the attribute value for the min and max of this input. Also use this divider component a lot with variants for an outlined arrow, filled arrow, no arrow, or even no line here. And these different variants are used throughout the entire calculator. And I have a slot for each of the columns here, and I wanted this to always wrap at the same point. So I have the responsive CSS inside that component and it's all based on container queries. So it's based on the actual size of this element here. And that way when it wraps, I can make the arrow point the other way and it's all based on the available space. So these elements go under each other before these two side panels even stack side by side. And then once the side panels wrap, the elements can go, be, go back to being side by side. And even here for this element, if I would have just did flex horizontal, then these numbers would have wrapped under their heading each at different points. But by using a container query CSS inside here, I was able to define the exact point based on when they should wrap based on the average length of the different numbers and make sure that the layout's always consistent regardless of how the parent elements are wrapping. So really I couldn't have built the majority of these layouts without container queries. Another challenge was making sure this mountain doesn't go behind the text because the color contrast wouldn't be enough to read it. So on shorter screen heights, we crop off some of the bottom of the mountain like so. And on larger screen heights, we lose some of the sides of the mountain image there, but the mountain image also always has to go to the bottom of the screen. Even on larger screen sizes, we just show more of that and then just crop off some of the sides. So the responsiveness of this was quite a challenge and honestly, I could probably make an entire video just on that image part. So a lot of the logic is actually handled in CSS, which greatly simplifies the JavaScript. So if I remove this Webflow edit class that shows all of the fields, I can just see what step one looks like by default, or I can switch over to step two here and see which fields are currently visible on that step. 
Now, once I start checking and unchecking different things, we'll notice the different fields are gonna hide and show based on what's currently selected automatically. This makes it so much easier for us to add new fields and manage which uh, options within each select are visible based on things from the previous step. That's all handled with CSS instead of having to require a bunch of JavaScript there. And the JavaScript is just a little bit automatic JavaScript that finds which fields uh, are visible and of those fields, are they filled, are they required? And then it also generates the share URL based on the visible fields there. So there's not a lot of custom JavaScript going on, just like some generic things that uh, can do a lot just from a little bit of a reusable script, thanks to much of the complexity being pulled away and used with CSS instead. So that's an overview of this project. Let me know if you'd like to see more behind the scenes, things kind of like this. And I hope this was helpful, uh, giving some insights into what I've learned from this project.